Python is a type of object-oriented programming language in which everything is essentially based on something called object. We will look into the concept of object with some examples in just a few moments. Within the family of object-oriented programming languages, the most popular ones are class-based, meaning that objects are instances of classes, and Python is a class-based language. Classes form the basis for all data types. You may wonder what exactly are objects, classes, and instances. Let's take a look at an example. Consider the following Python command. Temp equals 98.6. Actually, the single equal sign here does not mean temp is equal to 98.6. Instead, it means that the variable temp has been assigned a value of 98.6. This is called an assignment statement, the most important Python command. In this assignment statement, temp is called an identifier, which is nothing but a name. And then, this identifier temp has been associated with an object, which is on the right-hand side of the equal sign. In our example, the right-hand side is a floating-point object with value of 98.6. This assignment statement establishes an identifier temp and associates it with an object. Technically speaking, the identifier temp is associated with memory address of the object to which it refers. We can use the Python function type to find the data type. Here we go. It shows that temp is float. To be exact, it means identifier temp is an instance of float class. In Python, identifiers are case sensitive. If we type lowercase temp as we originally defined, it shows 98.6. But if we type uppercase TEMP, the system will give us an error message. In this case, it is a name error indicating that capital TEMP is not defined. An identifier cannot begin with a number either. Suppose we would like to establish an identifier 8PMP, it will show a syntax error, as you see over here. Additionally, in Python, there are 33 specially reserved words that cannot be used as identifiers. They include true, false, none, if, else, if, else, for, while, etc., etc. We will be touching on most of these reserved words in this review. Python is also a dynamically typed language. It means that you don't need to declare the data type of an identifier beforehand. Unlike in some other languages such as C++, you have to declare the data type of an identifier before you can actually use it. That is to say, in Python, an identifier has no declared type, and it can later be assigned to another object of different type. The identifier has no definite type, but the object to which the identifier refers does have a definite type. Let's see one example. In this example, temp still is 98.6. Now we establish another identifier, a rig, which is being assigned to an existing object. This new identifier, a rig, is called an alias of the floating point object 98.6. At this point, either name or identifier can be used to refer to the same object. 
Now let's say temp is reassigned to a new value by doing the following. Temp equals temp plus 5. This command will first evaluate the right hand side of the equal sign, actually the assignment operator. The right hand side expression is based on the existing association of the identifier temp. So it creates a new floating point object or instance, which has a value of 103.6. Subsequently, the identifier temp is reassigned to the new object 103.6. The identifier org continues to refer to 98.6. Let's use print command to see whether it is indeed true. Well, no doubt about it, temp is 103.6 and org is 98.6. Now let's see how we can create and use objects. The process of creating a new instance of a class is called instantiation. Typically, a constructor is used to create an instance of a class. Suppose there is a class named widget which has two parameters. The assignment statement w equals widget of a and b will create an instance of widget class named little w. Many Python building classes have a literal form for designating new instances. An example of temp equals 98.6, the term 98.6 is a float class literal. Another way to create a new instance of a class is to call a function that creates and returns such an instance. For example, Python building function sorted takes a sequence of comparable elements as a parameter and returns a new instance of list class which contains those elements in sorted order. Let's say we have five numbers 5, 1, 3, 4, 2 in a tuple. We can call sorted function on it and the function returns a list which contains 1 through 5 in ascending order. We just talked about instantiation. Now let's see how we can use objects in Python. Function call is always a choice like we did just now calling the function sorted on a sequence of 5 numbers. In Python, many classes may also define one or more methods. These methods are also known as member functions. To invoke a method on a specific instance of the class, simply use the dot operator. Let's see an example. Say data is a list of five numbers, 5, 1, 3, 4, 2, Python's list class has a method named sort that can be invoked with the syntax data.sort parenthesis. Let's give it a try. Not surprisingly, we get a list of those five original numbers in ascending order. The dot operator can invoke a method upon the immediate result of some other operations. Just want to remind you that some methods return information about the state of an object but do not change that state. These methods are called accessors. Other methods like the third method of list class change the state of an object. These methods are called mutators or update methods. In the next video, we're going to discuss Python's building class.